from Byron, Mississippi. It's Lakeshore Church. Really, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will have been loosed in heaven. Again, I tell you, truly I tell you, if two of you on earth agree about any matter that you pray for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there among them. Let's pray together. We thank you, Lord. Uh, you know my heart today, and I desire just to be used of you. Uh, Lord, you know what I need and, and conversation that we've already had and, and the, uh, the things that I'm putting in place and carving out that. I pray, Lord, that you would bless my words, my thoughts, and most of all, beginning with me, all of us would walk in obedience to what we hear from you today, from your word, expounded on it, and God will be careful to give you the praise for we ask you to pray it in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen, amen. amen. You may be seated. As you're settling in, did you notice the authority? Did you notice the matter-of-factness of this passage? Intrigued by it for many years, that uh, if we bind something on earth, it's bound in heaven. That's, a, that's out there, isn't it? If we lose something here, it's loosed in heaven. Um, J. Vernon McGee, uh, I, one of my commentaries that I read from, one of the heroes of the faith, uh, a dear man that um, I said the last words. I'd already moved over here, went back to Georgia. He gave me two sets. I had a set of commentary that he gave me. And then at his passing, he had left word that he wanted me to have a certain number of books, and there was a whole other set. So I have a, two sets of commentaries. But I, I, I'm intrigued by his aspect. He talked a lot in, in his commentary about the authority that we have. And that we need to understand that's not a name it and claim it of whatever I want, God's going to give it to me. It's more about that we're tied into the heart of God, and we want what God wants for us. And we believe God for it. And God honors us in that. But it's authority. And then the last is verse number 20, that's really our crux for today, is where two or three are gathered together in his name, he'll be there in the midst. That's amazing. It's, it's been a hundred times or better that somebody will come up to me after a sermon or whatever and say, how did you know that? And I'm going, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, it's, it's unique, and they're, they're across the board. But that's the way it is. The Holy Spirit gathers together with us, and yes, God directs us in advance, but it's always unique how a song will minister to you or a verse of Scripture will or the sermon uh, because God's in it. And we gather together in his name, it says he will be in the midst. And what I want to say about this authority that we have according to this passage is with what's going on is we need a close walk with Christ. And all that's going on in our world today and for the child of God to be seen in the stand, I am troubled in the world today. I'm troubled that it seems like everybody has a say, but it seems like the child of God is saying less and less. It seems like the world that we're living in, everybody's got the microphone, but the ones who need to be telling it, who know the truth, <laughs> and the truth will set you free, seem to say less and less. Ah, we need it. We need this walk with Christ. And with all that's going on, I need a closer walk with him. I need more time with him. <laughs> that's where God's hanging out in my life with this sermon, is that I need more time with him. Uh, I, I, I've said it this way. It's a change of a letter. It's that you and I, we've got to crave it. You got to crave more of God in your life, but then you got to carve it out. You got to crave it. There's got to be a realization that you need it, but then you got to you got to put feet to it and say, "Okay, I'm going to work this out with all that's going on." I think about the world. I think about the church as a whole, as I've already alluded to. I think about our church. I think about the changes that are in the air. I, I, it's just a natural time that we're going through. I think about the opportunity to lead others today. Where is the voice that cries out in the wilderness? I think about those types of things. We're, we're waiting on everybody else. And I even think about this platform where I sit before you, whether it's going out TV or Facebook or radio or, or just what somebody hears today. I need a closer walk with him. I need to know his heart. I need to know Christ's voice. I need to have his presence in my life. And, and I know that permeates for you and wherever you are with him. And when I think about my relationship with Christ, I think about that closeness. I think there's some just obvious things that I want to share with you today. And uh, when I think about being close to Christ, the first thing that comes to mind is simply it's a distance issue. If, and I'm talking about literally, okay, to start off with. If you want to be close to Christ, then you got to deal with the distance in your life if you realize he's not. Sin naturally causes distance. I chose not to go there. There are multiple scriptures, but it, it's, it, the scripture shows us that and we know it. I know my own life. If I'm in a certain place with God and something's not right in my life, 
I don't feel the same. It doesn't feel the same. You know there's distance there. I know he still loves me. He still cares for me. But sin causes a distance. And it, there, is, there is one scripture that I think that I want to show you. It's really a, a paramount. It's really a, a big scripture today for the Gentile and the Jew alike. It's for us understanding God and what he did. But in, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14, it says this, For he is our peace who made both groups one and tore down the dividing wall of his stop, uh, hostility. See, that, that wall that you're talking about, what Paul is referring there is, is between the wall that's between the Jew and the Gentile. And for the Jew today that still doesn't recognize Christ as Messiah, they know they're God's chosen people. They still have that wall up or try to. But Jesus came along, and what he did for us, and Paul is showing us, is he broke down that wall. He tore down the wall so that it's not just for the Jew, it's not just for the Gentile, it's for both groups. What we often do with Scripture when you hear both is a lot of times we, we, allude, we, we think that is uh, saved and lost. <laughs> we think that's righteous and unrighteous, or good and bad. But a lot of times when Paul's writing, what he was talking about was the Jew and the Gentile that they were going together, that Jesus had done that. The veil had been rent. It had been torn in two. God was creating a new day, all right, that you see it there, all right? It's no longer but just Jews, but now Gentiles too. And Jesus dissolved that distance. He desires to have closeness in my life and in yours as well. If you remember, you talk about distance. Do you all remember when we did the Genesis issue, we showed almost half a sermon was on this. Do you remember one of the first things that Adam and Eve did when they sinned? Anybody remember? Besides making you know, clothes for themselves out of fig leaves or whatever, out of leaves. Do y'all remember what they did? They went and hid. See, there's something about when something is not right in your life, there, there's that element of going away. You're going to see it in the, in the person of Peter in a few minutes and what he did. But there is distance, and it's a dis distance issue, all right? And then also, not only is that a distance issue, but secondly, when I think about it, there's also distinctions. Acts chapter 4, verse 13 shows us this distinction. It said, when they observed the boldness and, uh, of Peter and John and realized that they were uneducated and untrained men, they were amazed and recognized that they had been with Jesus. <laughs> Very fa fascinating verse here. They recognized that they'd been with Jesus. They knew. It, it's, it's unique. When I, thought, I wonder, I've often wondered this in their boldness. What was different about them? Was it they had been around Jesus for these few years and, and they carried themselves like him? Did they respond to others the way that Jesus did? Were their words different? Was their countenance different? Something was different. They recognized their boldness. Was it their boldness with broad shoulders? Was it their boldness in their words? Something they recognized was different with Peter and John because they had been with Jesus. Lately, I've been catching up on the chosen. <laughs> Uh, th I'm in the third season about halfway through and boy, I watched one yesterday that'll light your fire it's, It was a good one uh, I've always been fascinated with the woman with the issue of blood and the way they depicted that if you've not seen it It's worth the watch. It really is But in the chosen i've been uh, amazed how many times and I knew it was in the word But how many times somebody when they would recognize one of the disciples they would say you you were with the rabbi <laughs> You're a follower of jesus and many times they said I mean dozens of times and so it's unique that there's a distinction. There was a distinction with the followers of Christ that they were exactly that. Now, it's a deep, convicting question for me, but I want to share it with you. Really comes out of study just a simple way. It's convicting. Shouldn't, shouldn't we sound like him? <laughs> shouldn't there be a distinction that if I'm a follower of Christ and he's changed my life, shouldn't, shouldn't I look like him? Now, this might plow too deep. Shouldn't we sound like him? Shouldn't we love like him? Shouldn't we act and react and respond like him? And, and I fail miserably in that because Jay raises his ugly head and, and, and brings much conviction to heart. But shouldn't there be a distinction that I'm a follower of Christ? See, and I say today, I wonder. People say, well, people don't see the need today. Well, I wonder. I, I really do. It's a conviction of my heart is that we run after the things of the world and the things of the world trouble us and all the things that are going on. And yet, isn't God still God? And isn't God still in control? And yet, so many times that, that what I need is I don't need the solution to my problems. I don't need to know what all's going on. What I need is a closer walk with him. <laughs> There's something about when Jesus is on the scene, it's going to be okay. You know? 
Some would say, Brother Jay, how can you be so emphatic about going to heaven because Jesus is on the scene? That's how I can. Think about it. There are distinctions. Wow. And really, it's conviction again of my own heart that there should always be a distinction. And I fear today when they do the research and they find out that there's not much difference between the person that says they're a believer in Christ and a person that's not, there should be distinction. And I'm saying that for Jay, and God helped me to operate in that better. I found this quote by Billy Graham, and he really summed it up. He said, being a Christian is more than just an instantaneous conversion. It is a daily process whereby we grow to be more and more like Christ. And then the third thing is when I think about the closeness to Christ and being close to him, anytime there's a disturbance in your life, then there's an effect from that. Anytime something comes up, there's an effect. And it means everything to have him close to you. I love the story of Lazarus for, for several reasons. I mean, I just love the story. There's so many dynamics to it. There, there, there really are. But do you remember what Martha said in John eleven twenty one is the verse? Do you remember what Martha said when she finally met Jesus after he had, she had sent him and it was several days later? Then Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. So she shows us, doesn't he? doesn't she? Is that what do we need? I just need Jesus to be here. Now, the great thing is, is he's not in his bodily form anymore. He's, he's in the heavenlies. And now we have the Holy Spirit where we gather together in his name. He'll be there in the midst. What I need is I need Jesus to be near. The closer he is, I'm just like Martha. I know it's going to be all right if Jesus is on the scene. If he's, he's in the house, it's going to be okay. But disturbances when we're disturbed, when there's things that come along in our life, that's really a, a pivotal time. I believe you've heard it before. You've heard things either make you bitter or better, right? We go through things. We, we, we go through. And many times what happens is things come along and, and it causes us some, some issue. It really does. Um, here, I'll tell you one for me. I've thought this literally for decades now. And it's just a little simple thing about my own prayer life. You, you might come up to me as a pastor, and early on in the ministry, somebody would ask me, say, Brother Jay, I need you to pray for me, and now we'll get a text, or we'll get a call on a cell phone, or we'll get a call at the church, or maybe it's somebody who knows, but Brother Jay, will you pray? I need you to pray. Something's going on, and maybe their normal life becomes abnormal. It's terrible, sometimes very tragic. It always occurs. I think there's very few times that this has not occurred. When somebody asks me to pray, my first thought is, will God hear me when I pray? Now, some of the people would get off the train right there. You'd go, he always hears us. That's not what the word of God says. And I always equate it to relationships. If you and I are on the outs, we're not going to listen to each other. And let me tell you what, let me define the outs for, for myself and God is that God's the same today as he was yesterday. If there's an out, it's Jay's fault. Amen. And so if we're on the outs, I got to get it right for God to hear me. I've had times before when somebody said, brother Jay, would you pray for me? And the first thought I had is that God's not going to hear my prayer because I'm not where I need to be. And I'm just being transparent with you. I'm trying to use that word in every sermon. I'm just trying to be transparent with you. The scripture says things like this. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord doesn't hear me. You didn't, hear, you didn't come here to hear marriage 101 or parenting 101 or, or, or staff 101 or friendship 101 or church member 101, but here it is. If there's something between myself and someone else, I'm not listening to them until we get that right. Now, we understand that, don't we? We understand what it's like when you're not getting along with your spouse and you walk through the room, and they say something, and you really don't want to hear it because it's not right. You know, you know what it's like as a parent. If you're a parent, you know what I'm talking about, or a child. You know what it's like with your parent when it's not right, and you try to have conversation. You try to go around it and keep on going until you get, you get that right. You can't go on. Let me tell you what. That's the same way it is with God. I take my grocery list to the Lord, and the Lord says, I don't want to hear your stuff. I want you to get that thing right that's not right between us. And we get it right, then we can be what we need to be. Hmm, it's pretty good. Disturbances cause us. Closeness, and we need to hear this, closeness says he's near. Hmm. Disturbances make us bitter or better. Wow. Remember, one more, when we talk about this, I say this verse a lot, James 4, 8. Wow. You say today, Brother Jay, I want to get closer to God. I'm not as close as I used to be. My pastor used to say it this way, and he's been in heaven a long time now, but he used to say this, people get over being saved. <laughs> Man, they used to be on fire for the Lord. They used to serve the Lord. They used to walk with the Lord. And somehow something happened. 
Maybe it was apathy and complacency. Maybe it was just time. Maybe it was just distance. We got one ripple away, further and further away. And, and before long, we've become something abnormal and we're calling it normal. We say, this is the Christian life. And God says, no, it's not. The Christian life is over here close to me, not this long distance relationship that we got going on. <laughs> Y'all remember the old saying that uh, heart, absence makes the heart grow fonder? Y'all remember that? Back in my dating life, let me tell you what I found out. Yeah, absence does make the heart grow fonder for someone else. Huh? Suzanne and I are at our best when we're close together. Hmm. See, when we think about our relationships with things like that, think about God. People say, well, I, I know him. I got saved when I was seven. I'm 58 now. It's, it's okay. But what about now? What about the closeness that God wants in my life right now? God and I don't talk much about when I got saved at seven. We talk about my relationship today, today. <laughs> it's there, all right? Okay, I got to move on. Listen, James 4, 8, it's, it's Nate, draw near to God. If you say today, Brother Jay, I'm not as close as I used to be, and, and I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm parallel in your sermon today, and, and I'm telling you I'm not. Been transparent with you. Do I know him? Yes. Hmm. But I know today I gotta, I've got to crave it, and then when I crave it, i got to carve it out in my life. I know what I got to do. I got to get the busyness out of my life. I got to have more quality time with him. I prayed it this morning. I got to say no to some good things so that I can say yes to the great things that God has for me in my own life. I'm not talking about bitterness. I'm not talking about sin. I'm talking about a closer walk with God. And distractions and disturbances in your life will get you. They'll either make you bitter or better. And watch this. If you say today, Brother Jay, you're, you're on to something. I'm living there. God's leading you because I'm in the same boat. Let me tell you how you get closer. You ready? We don't like this part. James said, draw near to God. He will draw near to you. Wow, that's a great verse, isn't it? But that's only part of it. Here's how you do it. You've got to cleanse your hands and you've got to purify your hearts. Let me tell you what's happened in the church today. Mm. Somehow we tried to separate the heart from the hand. I hear this stuff, guys. I hear it. I see it. I, I, I listen to a lot of preaching. I listen to a lot of teaching. I read a lot of stuff. There's something that has happened in the Christian church the last 50 or 60 years where we have separated the love of God and the life that we have born in us and the life that we live in Christ. You following me? Yep. Let me tell you something. You cannot have a heart of God in you and it not affect your hands. <laughs> You know what religions do? Religions think you can do enough with your hands to affect your heart. That's backwards. No, what, what goes on on the inside will affect the outside. And then what happens in the church is somehow we've tried to separate it. I can go do all of this and still have a relationship with him. But you're not going to be close to him. You're not. I'm not. God's showing me that. Jay, if you crave it, then you not only have to crave it and a desire in your heart, but then you've got to carve it out with your hands to be close to me. So a closer walk's going to cost us something, okay? And, and I'm saying me, but that's where we are, all right? Now, <laughs> how many of you re remember the song? You raise your hand. How many of you remember the song, uh, Just a Closer Walk With Thee? Would you raise your hand? Way up, way up like your, your football team just scored, okay? All right, you remember it? How many of you uh, sing well, but you sound terrible when you sing? Would you raise your hand? Okay. That was a little too many hands for us to sound real good, okay? All right. But I want you to sing well. Now, I'll do like the old song leaders do. I'll have you stand up. I won't do that. All right. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea, daily walking close to Thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. You're fixing to have to stand up. No, just kidding. Y'all sing out. I would love not to sing and just listen to you, okay? All right, but I might drop out here in a minute. Let's do it again. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Sing. Daily. Finish it. Let it be. 
Hey, sing it one more time. One more time. Just sing it. I hope that's your heart today. And if I know one thing about my own walk with God is if you want to be closer to him, you can be. You can be. You know, you know someone say, Brother Jay, how do you do it? You know, a lot of times preachers are great. We'll tell everybody what to do or tell things about it. But I started working on, and, and it comes back to that craving. You know, you got to crave it and then carve it out. But how do you do it? I want to show you something. You must limit the distractions in your life. I need better time with God. The, the first thing I, <laughs> I didn't say this in the first service, but it comes to mind, but you know, if you call and say, I want to talk to brother Jay and they say he's here, but he's not available. I might be carving out better time with God. And someone say, well, well, that's a great thing. We're paying you to have time with God. That's good. I remember one time the Lord dealt with me about taking some time and this reflecting back years ago. And I remember saying to the Lord in my prayer time, Lord, if I, if I spend more time with you, if I'm not around when people need me, I didn't have Bo, I didn't have Glenn, I didn't have a staff. It was just, I don't even know if I had a youth pastor then, much less a secretary. And I remember saying, Lord, if they don't ride by and they don't see my truck or they don't see my vehicle at the church, and they'll think I'm loafing. I said, brother, I don't know if I can. And God said to me, just clear as I've ever sensed the Lord, he said, if you spend time with me, you won't have to worry about everybody else. Just a closer walk. I'm not saying you don't know the Lord. I'm not saying I don't know the Lord. I'm assured for heaven as if I was already there. But the condition of the world, we better have him up to date today because we don't know what it's going to cost us tomorrow. And, and people say, oh, Brother Jay, that'll never happen. Come on, you need to watch the news. We're just that far. Just that far from litigation. That far from things being taken from us. That far. Hmm. What must I do? I got to limit distractions. Here, how don't you get this? When I think about that, the first thing, maybe it's because of the, 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 uh, the vegetables are going away. You know, it's, it's, it's summertime and, and all that. Um, I met a fine fella. I, I knew of him. He's been giving me uh, okra. Suzanne baked some okra the other day. I had eaten five before I realized you're not supposed to eat the end of it. Some of you have no idea what I'm talking about, but that's Okay. First, you got to be right for the picking. I, I, I think you got to realize if, if this is Jay, if I want to get close to the Lord, and this hurts to say it to me, but you got to realize that you're not. Hmm. Y'all follow me? To, to, be, to, to be, you know, right for the picking, you got to realize that, wait, I, I need to get closer because I'm not. That, that's a tough thing to swallow. That, that's tough for me as a pastor to sit up here and say, I'm not, but I'm not. I, I can tell you some of the reasons why, other things I can't. You've got to be right for the biggest Secondly, you've got to get it right. To, to get closer and limit the, 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 the distractions, you've got to get things right if they're not. You don't need anybody else telling you. Take it to the Lord. When people talk about, well, I'm not where I used to be. I don't seem to be as close to the Lord as I used to be. I guarantee you there's a reason if you're not. Okay? Just saying for Jay. But, and then the third thing is you've got to get rid of things. <laughs> Man, I live in, I already said it earlier. Huh. Y'all remember the story about the curious arts in the book of Acts chapter 19? Remember where it says believers? I just want to read it to you. Many who had become believers came confessing and disclosing their practices. Wow. While many of those who had practiced magic collected their books and burned them in front of everyone so that they calculated their value and found it to be 50,000 pieces of silver. In this way, the word of the Lord spread and prevailed. I believe with everything about me, the reason that the child of God is not having the effect. And please say, I'm talking about Jay. We do not have the effect on the world that we need to have as we look so much like the world that people don't see the difference. Mm. 50,000 pieces of silver. They said, I'm a follower of Christ. I can't keep doing this worldly stuff and say I'm a follower of Christ, and, and I'm not going to go back to it. I'm not going to put it in a drawer for a month or two and go back to it. I'm not going to put it in the closet back there for a later time. No, no, no I'll tell you what. You, you can do it away with it, and you burn it. Wow. Mm. And then my Bible character for today is Peter. Y'all remember him, don't you? <laughs> Peter's close to the Lord, one of the main three, the inner circle. Man, he saw some unbelievable things. 
The chosen comes to mind again. Some of the way they depict that is phenomenal. But we know that he denied the Lord. Look at this passage in Luke chapter 22. It says they seized him, led him away, and brought him into the high priest's house. Meanwhile, Peter was following how, where? At a distance. <laughs> so now I'm right there with you, Lord. I'm not going to let anything happen to you. I'll kill him. Remember cutting the soldier's ear off? Remember all that? They're not going to do anything to you. I won't let them do that to you. And he called him the devil and told him to get behind him. Now when he sees it happening, where's Peter? <laughs> huh? God needs us to be close and we're at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together and Peter sat among them. When a servant saw him sitting in the light, looked closely at him, she said, this man was with him too. He was close, but he denied it. Woman, I don't know him. After a little while, someone else saw him and said, you're one of them too. Man, I'm not, Peter said. About an hour later, another kept insisting this man was certainly with him since he was also a Galilean. But Peter said, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Another, another gospel says that he cussed him. Immediately while he was still speaking, a rooster crowed. Then the Lord turned and looked at Peter. You know what I think, what I call invitation time, my own time with the Lord when I have devotional time, when I read God's word, it's Jesus looking at me. <laughs> Huh? We come to church like this and the preacher didn't know anything about my life and it's like God's told me your life story and he really hasn't. It's just the power of the Holy Spirit. But you know what it is? It's Jesus looking at you. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? When you realize that you were there but you're not there and you need to get there, Jesus is looking at you. Now Peter's messed up and Jesus looks at him. So Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him before the rooster crows today, you would deny me three times. Watch this. And he went where? Outside and wept bitterly. So what happens? Something comes along in our life. I don't do it well. So where I am with the Lord, something comes along and I mess up. What do I do with it? Instead of turning to the Lord and saying, God, like an altar and saying, God, I'm sorry. Would you forgive me? I want to stay where I need to be with you. He's already following at a distance. Now he realized what he's done. And boy, it's a literal story. Now he runs out weeping bitterly. Further and further and further away. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So true. And yet it needs to be said today, and I want you to hear this because sometimes we point a finger and it speaks volumes to me to say this, but to hear that aren't we glad that God doesn't leave us there? <laughs> Man, I could get so happy. One country fellow said, I, can, I, I feel so good, a puppy pull a freight train with it. All right, but I'm telling you, aren't you glad God doesn't leave us there? And let me tell you something, he didn't leave Peter there either. Let me show it to you in Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 7. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they could go and anoint him. Very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb at sunrise. They were saying to one another, who will roll the stone away from the entrance to the tomb for us? Looking up, they noticed that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. It's a good sermon there too. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white robe sitting on the right side where they, they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he told them. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. Amen, church? <laughs> He's not here. See the place where they put him. Watch this. But go. Tell the disciples 